Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to Phase 1, the show where we look at pre-release content. Today we're looking at Hrat. This is a title developed by... Spytony? I don't even know how to pronounce their name. Whatever. This is an old-school throwback first-person shooter using a interesting way of rendering the graphics. It's like a software renderer mode. Something you'd see back in the late 90s with something like Quake. This game takes place in Czechoslovakia with a sci-fi horror twist, paranormal, out the ass, and we've not only got a throwback in terms of time period, but we've also got a throwback in terms of graphics and gameplay, because it's going to be like one of those old school FPS with keys and, well, it's going to be a lot of fun, we'll show you in a second. So, episode currently out now is Kiss Me Gustav, this game's got a good sense of humor, I gotta say. It's got two more episodes in development. We can level select where we want to go. We're going to pick Luna, and we've got five difficulties. We're going to pick Normal. So, welcome to Hrat. This, again, is an old-school FPS, and it's got this very unique style to it. It... I was, I was going to say that originally when I checked it out, I was like, oh, I don't see that being very uh, pleasing. A, a software-rendered aesthetic. Back in the day, when a video card, when your video card, when you're playing a PC game, couldn't render a game properly, or it just, you know, wasn't compatible, you would have to run the game in software mode rather than hardware accelerated mode. And what that meant was, it's basically like now your computer's just like so bad that you have to run everything on the lowest possible settings. This is a really fun game, I gotta say. It's got some great shooting, some great level design, and the aesthetic I wasn't a big fan of at first, but man, the the muddiness, the the darkness of it all, the disgusting it, it just it just reminds me of home. It's it's just so beautiful, I like it. So the gunplay is quite good. You have a pistol, a submachine gun, a shotgun, a rocket launcher, you have grenades as well. Now the gun sounds are fine, they got some really good samples. Unfortunately, the the base is just not there. Like, they just need to add a little bit more base to the guns, but... Let's just kiss. <laughs> it's, uh... I, I, I don't know about what, what it is about that that's so funny, but I just I just really enjoy this game's sense of humor. It's nice. Also, it's some very good uh, atmosphere. I'll let you listen here. Yeah, sounds very good. It, uh, it really pulls you in. Uh, despite the fact that it is a very fast-paced first-person shooter, and a good one at that. It's not very nice. Okay, let's see if we can... Oh. The grenade bounce is something I am getting used to. I don't think we can go down there yet. So, let's just go around over here. I did beat this level a little earlier. Can't quite remember it too well. But we're actually out of... Bullet. Yeah, so when you start a level just anywhere, you have to start with, like, the pistol and, like, this weapon. Which is actually not too bad. The pistol's actually pretty good in this game, as is the melee weapon. It looks like we're gonna die here. Horribly. Oh! Got the shotgun. Nice! Alright, just saved ourselves. So yeah, like in any other game like Doom, you, you start off with, like, nothing if you just select a random level, so that can be a little annoying. But hey, it stops you from, like, kind of cheating, where you're like, Oh, I'm out of ammo in this one segment, I'm out of health, why don't I reload the level, and then I'll have all my health at uh, all my health back. And you can do that, but uh, you won't have any of your weapons. Now, this game does have a few issues. Now, navigation's actually quite good, I gotta say. There's some cool stuff, like traps right here, like, this, this area wasn't open. I went up here, I'm like, oh, it's locked, and I go to backtrack, and I get ambushed. That's cool. And this game's got a very good sense of pacing and direction. So it's not a horror shooter. It's not really scary, even though it's got the aesthetic for it. I wish the... I hope the new episodes, you know, kind of convey something like of a fear. Or just something a little bit more tense. I know that can kill the pacing, potentially. But the game already does the atmosphere and then the fast-paced gunplay really well. What... I don't like, though, is that some parts of the level are just kind of frustrating to navigate through it. In particular, one part. Um, there was an issue where I was traversing through a level, I was trying to find a key, and I kind of knew where the key is, but I didn't know how to get there. So apparently there was an electrical junction box, like... 
uh, nearby that I had to shoot. And the game tells you, you know, you have to shoot these junction boxes sometimes. Like, you know, that's fine. But this thing was, was like 15 feet above my head, so... Uh, I, I went up, ended up, like, looking up a, a guide, guide online after, like, running around that level for, like, 20 minutes. It was, it was annoying. Otherwise, the game is really, really good at conveying, like, you know, where you're supposed to go. And of course, there's lots of secrets, hidden rooms, um, switches... A lot of cool stuff. New gu uh, guns earlier, it's not just health packs sometimes. But anyway, uh, one of the nice things, the way the game conveys where you're supposed to go very well, is like when you hit a switch, it'll sometimes spawn a new enemy. Like one enemy, right? And the enemy will be in an area, well, uh, you know, you've already been that to that area. You, you don't, where's the, uh, where's the new hidden door that just opened up? Well, the enemy's actually spawning next to it. So you go to shoot that enemy, you follow where his corpse is, and oh, hey! There's the, uh, there's the new area right there. Sweet. You yeah, know, it's got a good way of conveying to the player where you're supposed to go, and the game doesn't really slow down. Um, except for that one part where you don't know, have to find that dumb... That dumb box. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's a good time. Let me, uh, is it right here? Yeah, it's right here. Enemy variety is pretty good. They, of course, have that uh, little style where they, again, they look like a, a, a very... You know, they got, like, about six polygons on them, you know? I'm totally fine with it. It's a nice little aesthetic. Utilizing software rendering is a pretty cool trick, I gotta say. Uh, the game runs fairly well. Don't pay attention to the frame rate counter at the top there. I know that's, like, barely above, like, you know... A typical monitor frame rate, like 144 hertz, and it's not even 260. I have it locked currently. It actually goes like way beyond that. It's fine. In fact, let's actually check out the go uh, options menu right here. So we have the frame rate cab. I'm just using this so that it records better through OBS. Field of view settings right here. Ooh, yeah, it's nice. Uh, gamma colors, brightness, separate sliders. Nice to have. HUD scaling. Very nice. Very nice to have it like that. Crosshair type. Ooh. You got a scale as well. Tutorial messages, show all ammo, show level stats. And you have your sound settings, separate audio sliders right here. Global settings, these are for the game specifically, like heartbeat. Like, you know, when you're low on health, do you hear a heartbeat? You know, that's, that's, you know, like, that's what that is. Customized controls, fully customizable. This game actually does have a map, believe it or not. I don't think it is in here, though. Yeah, that is a little annoying. It doesn't show what the map button is. It's, it's, obviously, it's M, but it never tells you that in the tutorial, at least from what I've seen. It doesn't really show you that in the options menu, so you hit M, and here, here it is. It's actually not as convoluted as I was alluding to earlier. It's, you know, a fairly straightforward game. It just has some... See, there's an enemy spawning right there. Okay. So one might assume that we have to go that way, maybe. I actually forgot what I did inside that room. I hit a valve, yeah, okay, so we're gonna just go... Yeah, so, uh, this is the hidden room. So it just spawned out of here, so this was not there before, I actually came from somewhere else. Alright, and there we go. We got the ammo. Game gives you plenty of ammo to shoot their enemies, you're not gonna be worried about scrounging for it. Most of the time, I mean, you know, you guys saw me, I was... I was running out of bullets earlier, but that's because I just started the level fresh, but you can totally do that, oh god. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Uh, that brings me to another point I have with the game, uh, one of the other problems. So, first problem is some of the level design where it just doesn't tell you where to go. Which is that, just that one time, I've been playing about two hours of this game. And the other thing is the save system. There's no auto save at all, it's a quick save, which is fine, you know, it's old school, but you can go really far back, it seems, sometimes, especially when you have to do a lot of backtracking, you're trying to figure out where the hell you're supposed to go, and then you finally find, like, oh my god, this is where I'm supposed to go, great! I finally found, oh, and I'm dead. Now I have to find that area again. A little frustrating. I'd like in just save intervals. I just I just hate that. I hate it in I, I I'm not biased. I hate that in every form. I hate that in JRPGs where they send you back to the last save point. Absolutely despise that. It's annoying. Please stop that. I know it's a thing in shooters from back in the day, but please. <laughs> please. Have a checkpoint. Just one. One is fine. I don't mean, like, you know, start of the level checkpoint. Okay. So, gunplay. Pretty good. Enemy variety. Pretty good. 
Atmosphere, great. Movement, just awesome, just really nice. Sound design, pretty good. Is it worth the $20? I'd say to a degree, yes, if you're just really into what you say here. Personally, I, I really have a hard time justifying paying full price for a lot of games nowadays because I just I just don't get the immediate value. I've played so many games that it's just it's just a personal thing with I, I just can't enjoy a lot of games for you know that value. Like I bought Resident Evil 3 the other day, uh, 20 bucks, and I, I beat the whole game in like seven hours, and I really wasn't satisfied with most of it. You know, it, it's just weird. Like, it, it just really depends on, like, even, and even, even though I was, like, actually having a good time with that game, I still, like, uh, 20 bucks, I just kind of feel like I wasted it. And that's, like, a third of the price from what it originally was, so, yeah. I don't know, it depends on, you know, hey, like, have, have you, have you gotten your fill of retro shooters on Steam yet? Because there's a lot of these games. They go on sale a lot. You know, you have Ion Fury, you have the remaster of Blood, Fresh Supply. You know, there's there's a lot of games already out there. Do you really need another one? Do you really want to spend $20? Uh, well, I'd say that the unique thing this game does is its atmosphere, and it I like the direction it's going into. I'd say if it's got some episodes that were on the level, if not better than this, and if they, you know, go for a little bit of like a horror twist to it, um, absolutely, I could recommend it at 20. Right now, I'm, it's a cautious recommendation, like, I, it, you know, I'm still gonna recommend it, like, yeah, give it a shot if you meet this criteria, but, you know, it's a good game. It's a fun game, but <laughs> there are a lot of these games, and that's kind of sad to say, like, you know, like, oh, it's, it's great that we have so many of these great first-person shooters, just this new renaissance of games coming to Steam, and, uh, they're all competing with each other, and it's just a flooded market right now. It's a flooded market of good products, but it's still a flooded market. So, whether or not it's worth 20 bucks is up to you entirely, as always. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm out.